Hey guys, it's JD from Curiosity Leaf. I wanted to go over some teaware with you guys. Now, if you're used to traditional tea brewing, you can get your typical, you know, teapot and a tea bag, right? That's pretty much what we're used to making tea with here in the West. However, there are some new ways and new methods I would like to introduce to you for how to prepare your tea, and you've probably seen me do so in two of my previous videos, and that is using what is called a gaiwan cup. This method of brewing is traditionally from China, and it can come in a variety of different sizes. This is just my first example, and actually my first gaiwan that I purchased. These products can all be found on Amazon. I will go ahead and put the links for these down in the description box below. Just keep in mind though that, you know, due to the whole COVID situation and shipments and all of that, some of these items that I'm listing down below might not be readily available, but I just wanted to let you know that this is where I found them. And if you would like to purchase and try them out for yourself, you can do so. So the Gaiwan has the saucer, the cup, and a lid. And typically with the lid, you want it to be able to rotate and move around smoothly. That is because you put your loose tea leaves inside of the cup, pour your boiling water in, cover with the lid, let it sit for anywhere from 10 to 15 seconds, and you just pour out. So the lid serves as your strainer, and that's why you want it to be nice and smooth. That way you can position it, you know, however wide you want that opening to be as you're pouring out that tea. This one, I want to say just over 100 milliliters, maybe even a little less. The way they typically do this is that you would fill the water up to the brim and you would put your lid on. Some water might spill over the edge as you put that lid on. I don't typically go all the way to the top. So it's about 100 milliliters worth of tea and it is fairly small. It's it's a good starter guy one if you just want to try and experiment and test it out for yourself, see if you like doing it or not. So you would hold the edges. Again, you're pouring boiling water into this. So the reason for that flare is that it's there to protect you as you're carrying it. So you really only pick it up with these two fingers off on the side and you have your finger on top to be able to rock that lid back and forth. That's what is typically shown. There is no right or wrong way to use this. Another method I have seen is that you actually pick it up with the saucer and you can put your thumb up on the lid, position it, and you can carry it like this and do a side pour like this. And um, I really like this vessel is small enough. I can hold it in my hand comfortably, all three pieces, and just pour off to the side like that. The way I typically do it though, is that I use both my, my ring finger and my thumb finger. So I have my two middle and index fingers free and available just to have more control over the lid. So my pinky is free. Again, my ring finger, my thumb finger, and my two fingers for the top just to have better control over that lid. I cradle the flares into those fingers like that. You wanna be careful though when you're doing stuff like black teas because you know the higher the temperature, obviously the hotter the cup. So if you're cradling, cradling it in your fingers like so, you could still feel the heat on the cup. So it's something you're gonna have to get used to. It's fairly simple. It's around $10 or less than $10. The prices will fluctuate just on availability. What I like about this too is that you can see the inside, it has a glaze finished. So it's nice and shiny, it's smooth as well as on the inside of the lid and on the top of the saucer. The other texture though on the outer side, what's colored, and this comes in in uh, black as well, you can get the red or you can get the black. So the texture on the outside isn't as smooth, meaning it's not gonna be as slippery. So that's why I think this is the perfect starter guy wand for you. And it'll be the first link listed down in the description box below. This again was on Amazon. If you type in just Gaiwan Cup 2, it's pretty much the first or second result that will pop up. About 100 milliliters worth of tea. Here is another one that I was able to find. Some of the more expensive Gaiwans could be anywhere from 40 to $60. Typical price ranges will be anywhere from 15 to 20. You know, you're gonna find different variations, different designs, different styles, different materials. Even this is a clay and it's very poor, not very, very porous, but you can feel on the texture. It is smooth, but you can tell from the tea stains on the inside that it does absorb a little bit of the tea, so you want to keep that in mind. This one, I believe I was able to purchase around $16, $17. Again, these prices will fluctuate just based on availability. It's a different shape, and just for comparison, you can tell this one, again, is smaller, skinnier, taller. This one is wider, fatter. But what I love about this design and what appealed to me, of course, was, you know, the, the art decoration on top. That was really cool. But the flare on the edges. So it goes out a little bit more further than it does on this one. 
So you see this one is more narrow. This one has a wider flare at the top. This design really appeals to me because again, I cradle it in my fingers like this. So if it has a wider flare at the top, that's why I like this. It has a porous surface to it, meaning that it's gonna absorb whatever you put in there. You know, if you keep using the same tea over and over, it could develop a certain profile specifically for that tea. So what I use in this one is mainly oolongs. I only put oolong tea in this guy one because of that porous surface. And it's the same texture outside and inside, um, different colors, different textures. This one is a little bit more uh, capacity. Um, I want to say it's maybe around 120 milliliters. So yeah. And sometimes you will find saucers that do not have um, like that inner locking dip it that you see to hold the cup perfectly. This one barely holds it. So I don't, and because the, the saucer on this one is really wide, it's kind of uncomfortable to do it this way. Um, so yeah, just different sizes, different shapes. Fairly the same shape, but you know, you'll see a difference in design. This one is one of my favorites, the next one I'm about to show you. It's around the same size as the last one that I showed you. But what appealed to me on this one, again, is the outer texture. So I'm gonna show you two other pieces that I recently purchased that are porcelain sets. Um, the porcelain, if it's the outer smooth textured surface, you really wanna train yourself before purchase, purchasing those. Um, just because, you know, with all the water that you're gonna pour around these vessels, they could tend to be slippery. So I think that purchasing pieces that have a textured surface on the outer side that will help to aid in not having that cup so slippery in your hands is gonna be a big help. And that's why I purchased this black piece. The saucer is more, um, you know, it has like a shiny finish to it, more so than the vessel itself. This is nice and solid. And I like how that dip in the saucer really holds the cup very well this thing isn't sliding off anywhere. It does have a glazed interior. And this one is actually only around $11, $11, $12, I think. I purchased this one for 11 bucks. The flare is nice and smooth. Another thing I wanted to comment on though is the interior regarding the interior design. I'm gonna compare this to this one. So if you can tell, it has a really sharp corner at the bottom. Same thing with this piece. It has a sharp corner at the bottom and you would be able to see it on the inside as well. So you see how it kind of has like a natural flat cup interior surface. This one has a very, very nice convex bowl shape at the bottom. So you can see how smooth that curvature is at the bottom. I like my guy wants to have that really nice bowl shape convex like this rather than having a straight wall and then having kind of like a an angled thing like this. It's an aesthetic that I'm being picky about, but when I clean out the leaves, it just feels really nice to have that smooth rounded surface to just be able to clear out my leaves like that when I'm finished with my sessions. So again, this one is around 120 milliliters and I'll bring it closer. You can see that textured surface. The only thing I would say about purchasing wear like this is that, you know, of course, obviously you want to be cautious. Again, you are putting boiling hot water into this anywhere from 170 degrees to over 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So you want to be careful while handling these. Uh, my tips for first timers would be getting a guy wand that has a decent a wide flare. So it doesn't matter if you're holding it like this to pour, because this is far enough from the main vessel here. So you shouldn't be catching a whole lot of the steam or of the, the heat as you're pouring it out like this. But also the flare, because if you want your hand, because your, your fingers kind of really get crammed from doing this in a while. So that's why I hate using just these, my, my middle finger and thumb to hold it, because you really feel a lot of that strain here in your hand. So the way, again, I hold it is my ring finger and my thumb. And you can see it's not as tensified as opposed to doing this. So I'm holding it like this. My hand's tense. I can feel the strain back here in my hand. If I'm holding it like this, uh, my wrist is more back here. And that's the other thing, too, is that if you're holding it with these two fingers here, your wrist has to come on top to pour over, which I guess is a good thing in terms of like avoiding the steam as you're pouring it out. But I like to be more relaxed, have my wrist further down in alignment with the lip, with the rim of the bowl. 
and pour. And you just have to flex your wrist this way as you're pouring, as you're using these two fingers, not these two. Again, these two fingers, it's more of an up angle and you have to pour these two fingers. Wrist is level with the cup and you just have to bend down like this. There are sets you can buy as well. Um, again, the prices of Gaiwans just for the cups themselves. This isn't, to, I mean, you could drink tea out of them, but I highly recommend using these to brew your tea leaves in. What I like about it is how, how minimalistic it is in terms of, you know, you're not creating a lot of waste product. When you're finished, you just rinse it out and you throw away the tea leaves. That's it. There's no tea bags, no paper, no plastic, no nothing. In this case, I have a whole tea set. And I just recently purchased this one and it arrived today. And this is the porcelain ware, so you'll hear a lot of clinging. There are four cups. You, one thing you want to be that I want to advise you to while looking at these products on Amazon is that the images for a lot of these sets um, kind of get blown up. You know, a close-up angle is really going to give your, your brain a distorted view of, oh, it's going to be a big vessel, and really it's not. And so this is the brewing cup, similar to like how the Gaiwan would be, but it's more so kind of like a pitcher vessel where you would put your tea leaves in. Um, and it's really cute. It has this little flower top knob uh, for, the, for the lid, and this awesome... Uh, design pattern on both edges. Now what I like about this is that you can notice that the edges have a thicker, um, they're, they're thicker walled, so it's going to be a lot easier for you to pour. You would just put your finger on this lid and if you can see there are those little um, little holes where you would align it with the spout and you would just put your tea leaves inside of that, cover it up, wait a couple 10 to 15 seconds and then you could pour out. Once you pour it out, you wouldn't immediately pour into one of these cups. You would pour it into what is called the Gong Dao Bei or the sharing pitcher. It's a fairness cup. Why do we pour it into another pitcher before we pour it into a cup? As you're brewing your tea, the stronger flavors are going to be more so at the bottom where the leaves are and it's going to be more tasting like water at the top. So as you're serving out your tea, you know, into different cups as you go along, the first person that you're going to pour to is going to get the weakest amount of tea. The last person that you, you know, drain the cup into, they're going to get the strongest tea. So how do we mix that up? If you pour it all into the pitcher, it mixes the whole tea all up together. So it's fairly more even flavor profile as you're pouring this from this pitcher into the other cups. The cool thing about this set is that it has this awesome design on there. It was very appealing to me. I was like, oh, that's pretty. I want to try that. It was smaller than what I thought it was going to be. Of course, here again, these have like um, really close up pictures and they actually have a model using it. A lot of these products do come from China. Remember, this is culturally a Chinese custom to prepare your tea in this method. I'm not saying that it's a bad set, but there are definitely some design flaws that you discover as you want to experiment more with um, and, you know, go out of the comfort zone of non-traditional Gaiwan cups like this. So there's a lot of modern pieces that you'll see, gimmick pieces that will be advertised as, oh, it's a new way to make your tea and prepare your tea and it looks awesome and they'll stamp all kinds of awesome designs and stuff like that on there. So yes, I did fall for it, but I just wanted to try and see what it was like. These cups, obviously, you can tell are very, very tiny and kind of like a playset cup. One thing that annoys me the most are the reviewers on Amazon for these Gung Fu tea sets. These are supposed to be small. It is meant as a tea tasting ceremony or tea tasting way of making tea. It's supposed to be very quick, very strong. You're just tasting the tea. You're not really consuming it out of a big, huge teapot, you know. If you want to experiment with Gong Fu brewing, which is, you know, what I'm showing you right now, it is mostly intended for tea tasting. These are really quick sessions. So this is a set I'll be, you know, bringing to my office just because not a whole lot of people can stick around for very long, but I still would like to share tea with them. So I think these little tasting cups are really cute. They feel really nice too. Like you can see how, how nice and smooth and shimmery these things are. These are all porcelain tea wares. The main reason why I got this one is because it came with four cups. There was another set that had a completely, totally different marble design on it, but it only had two cups. And you'll see some sets that, you know, have the stackable cups 
Uh, the cool thing about this is that all the cups are the same size. There are some other sets you'll see out there where it's a bigger cup instead of a smaller cup instead of a smaller cup. So it's kind of like the, the Russian, those Russian dolls that you see that stack into one another. I was happy that I was able to find this. Prices on this are going to vary. This was listed because you're getting the brewing pitcher, you're getting the sharing pitcher, and you're getting the four cups. I think the listing is around $26, but I was able to get a coupon for $50. $50 not 15, five zero percent off. So technically I spent $15 for the set. The next set I'm gonna show you is going to be, it's another porcelain set that I was able to find and it's a traditional Gaiwan set. The only thing about the set is that it has a logo stamped across every vessel. But other than that, it functions just fine. So here it comes in the carrying case. The set I just showed earlier too has its own case. These are meant for travel. So if you want to Amazon search Gung Fu travel tea sets, you'd be able to find these on there. So the last set I'm about to show you was the most ridiculous deal. Like I had to get two of these things because of the pricing. It's a very nice porcelain Gaiwan. It's one of the nicest Gaiwans that I have actually. Um, and I've been primarily making tea with this since I've bought it. It has that nice wide flare. It feels really nice. Um, the other thing I wanted to comment too on is the white interior. If you're new to the whole Guy Wan Brewing, I highly encourage that you get a white interior or light colored interior. That way you can see the color of your tea changing and you know when you want to be able to pour out. Really you only leave your tea in there for longer if it's an aged tea. Newer teas like just your basic white and green teas do not leave in here for more than 15 seconds. It's gonna be really strong. The white interior really helps you to see the coloration as it's brewing inside your cup. But this set though comes with the Gaiwan. It comes with three cups instead of four, but that's completely fine. These cups are bigger. These are decent. Yeah, they look like shot glasses, right? But these are decent size. These are really good. I use these cups with my family when they're visiting. My dad drinks tea a lot with me, so I'll use these cups for us. And this is the Gongdao Bay, the sharing pitcher. Uh, which has a really nice spout. My only gripe about the other one that I purchased is that the spout is really, really skinny, so it pours very slowly. You know, you have to be careful when you're pouring from this one. Really skinny spout. Same thing with the brewing pitcher of the last set that I showed you. As you pour out from the tea, these holes are very tiny, so it pours very, very slowly. So what I started to do is, like a guy want, I'll go ahead and just position the lid like this, to get more tea to come out. So that's all I have for you guys in this video. Hopefully it has given you interest in wanting to know more about Gung Fu Brewing and to you know, kind of test out and experiment in purchasing your own Gaiwan sets. I really highly encourage you to do your own exploration and to try this method of brewing because I do believe that it, it really enhances the flavor of your tea. It's more intimate when you make tea in this way. And if you would like a tutorial, just let me know down in the comment section and I could I would happily show you guys how I brew my tea using my Gaiwan sets. Again, I've used this method in my two previous videos when I did the two tea reviews, but if you want a more like a broken down step-by-step -step version, I would be happy to share that with you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Keep brewing and we'll see you guys in the next video.